Jude Law's star rose quickly. Born to teacher parents in South London, he started acting at the age of 12. Before he moved to Hollywood, he'd had success on stage in the West End and on Broadway, and had even been nominated for a Tony Award for his role in Indiscretion. He's gone on to be recognised for his work in film, in both his native UK and in Hollywood, by being nominated for awards at the highest level, at the BAFTAs, the Golden Globes and the Oscars. And he's certainly had his fair share of press for other reasons. Relationships, bad boy ways, playboy lifestyle. But above all of that, Jude Law's acting talent is undeniable. It's good seeing him grow, you know? Uh, from like this little kid who's, you know, who's being highly spoken about uh, to, you know, with a talent. You know, there's no question about that, you know. He's going into the, the actor he is today, you know, and, uh, you know, he's not just a pretty face. Jude's on-screen career began with minor roles on British TV. He made the move to Hollywood after his breakthrough role in the movie Wild. But the role that really shot him to stardom was the talented Mr Ripley, alongside Matt Damon. His portrayal of a free-spirited playboy saw him nominated for Best Supporting Actor at both the Golden Globes and Oscars. The film was directed by Anthony Minghella, and it was certainly not the last time the pair would work together. There are so few people who have the intelligence and inquiry and charisma that Jude has. In fact, he'd caught the attention of plenty of big-name Hollywood directors. For the movie AI, Artificial Intelligence, Steven Spielberg sought Jude out. He explained to me that he had just finished writing the screenplay for AI, that there was a part in it he would like, would, wanted me to play. Um, he explained the uh, secrecy around it, wanting to, to make sure that it was a, a project that remained a secret. Uh, I mean, I was ready to jump on board the moment he called me, but obviously he said he wanted me to read it first. So I, I flew to London, uh, we, I read it, we, we talked about the, uh, the role and the piece, and um, I, I jumped on board very eagerly. Jude was not only eager to work with the legendary director, but also to sink his teeth into his role as a robot, which presented some unique challenges. How do you portray something which doesn't necessarily immediately have emotions? And, um, and also, how do you express a new type of mechanical, a new type of robot without being a sort of clunky, um, sort of metal Mickey type thing, you know, that, that can't move um, fluidly. He also got to work alongside another well-known actor, Oscar-nominated child star Hayley Joel Osment. It really felt like a buddy movie because, you know, June and I got to be really good friends while we're shooting uh, the film and doing all the fun stuff, you know, the action stuff together and all the cool technical things we got to do. The role saw Jude once again nominated for a Best Supporting Actor Golden Globe. Jude's rise through the Hollywood ranks saw him now being offered roles with big name Hollywood stars like Tom Hanks in Road to Perdition and Nicole Kidman in Cold Mountain. Cold Mountain was also the second time he worked with director Anthony Minghella. He is a great artist, but he's also a great man and a great leader, you know, and, and inspires incredible um, creativity, collaboration and calm. He also encourages enjoyment and calm, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a pleasure uh, to come to work because, because of the atmosphere. The award nominations continued to flow in. For Cold Mountain, Jude was nominated for an Oscar, BAFTA and Golden Globe. This was his second Oscar-nominated performance, but in spite of his success, Jude remained grounded. He's a lovely fella. Uh, I'm sure it's... Because there aren't, there aren't that many... Um, certainly in this country, there aren't that many sort of movie stars, you know. And he's been a movie star for a while now, and, and I'm quite impressed by how seemingly unaffected he is by it. He may have remained unaffected, but he certainly kept busy. In 2004, he appeared in six films in four months. Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow, I Heart Huckabees, Alfie, Closer, Lemony Snickets, A Series of Unfortunate Events, and The Aviator. So why push himself so hard? To me, it's all about the fear. And you see fear and you head for it. Right. You know, go for the things that scare you and right. challenge you. Right. 
because otherwise the job can be like treading water. And that doesn't always mean you succeed. I mean, you know, I can say more than anyone, you know, sometimes you flop, but that doesn't, shouldn't be a problem. Jude's career had been riding a wave of success, but in 2004, things took a turn for the worse. Now, I really liked Alfie, but it turns out I was pretty much alone. It was a flop at the box office, returning about half of its $60 million budget and was voted one of the worst remakes of all time. Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow and I Heart Huckabees also flopped and critics started to question Jude Law's appeal as a leading man. On top of that, Jude Law was made a laughing stock in front of his peers and the eyes of the world at the 2005 Academy Awards. Chris Rock made a joke implying that if a director couldn't sign Tom Cruise to their movie, they'd go for a cheaper, less talented Jude Law. When he said, if you want Tom Cruise and all you can get is Jude Law, wait. Jude's private life has become as much a talking point as his acting. From 1998 until 2003, he was married to Sadie Frost and the pair have three children together. After his divorce, he became engaged to his Alfie co-star, Sienna Miller, but they split when details of his affair with his children's nanny surfaced. And after all of that, Jude became a father for the fourth time when his ex-girlfriend, model Samantha Burke, gave birth to a girl named Sophia. In 2006, Jude starred in Breaking and Entering, a film that hit close to home with themes of infidelity and redemption. The film's really about doing the right thing, learning how to do the right thing by yourself. There were a lot of elements to him that I'd never played in a part before and that were close to experiences I've had. And there were a lot of ghosts in it that sort of reflected my, my life that I, I felt by going through it, I could maybe banish. This was the third time he'd teamed up with director Anthony Minghella. And who better to exercise demons with than someone you know and trust? That level of trust, is, it, it, it was there to begin with um, because of his talent and his history as a filmmaker when I first worked with him. And then when you go, when, the second time it was there because of the personal experience. The third time you go back, you just know you're with someone who is going to do you do right by you. From love rat to romantic comedy, The Holiday was a bit of a comeback for Jude. Starring Cameron Diaz and Kate Winslet, it was his first conventional Hollywood romantic comedy. I was thrilled when he was cast as my brother because we sort of, you know, that's a little bit the kind of relationship that we have anyway. Jude is lovely. He really is the nicest guy. He, um, he's just wonderful. He's so generous as a person and as an actor. I can't think of a better person to have gone through, you know, making this film with. He was my partner in it and we had, um, just a great time. You know, he, he shows up every day. He's so professional. Like, he's just there every minute in exactly the way that he's, he should be. Um, or you hope some, another actor will be. And um, he's just the nicest guy ever, such a good guy. Sure, he gets a lot of attention for his looks, but he's worked very hard to be recognised for more than just that. In Road to Perdition, he played an evil, balding hitman. And in Sleuth, he worked behind the scenes as well, signing on as one of the film's producers. He got so involved with his producer role, he almost failed to dedicate enough time to his acting role. And it really wasn't until the summer that, that Ken suggested that he and I start meeting and discussing my part in particular before we went to rehearse the piece as a whole that I started suddenly realising that this was a really good part and, yeah, and a hard part too. I suddenly got a bit nervous because there are all these facets to it that I thought were going to be quite tricky, actually. After the shock death of Heath Ledger, Jude, Johnny Depp and Colin Farrell signed on to complete the work their friend Heath had started in the Imaginarium of Dr Panassus. The three actors donated their earnings to his daughter Matilda. Next, Jude played Dr Watson in the Guy Ritchie-directed Sherlock Holmes, alongside Robert Downey Jr and Rachel McAdams. When I was asked to get involved, uh, Robert, was, Robert was already set as Sherlock and Guy was directing and I knew from then that it was going to be a different take on the, the uh, older films of Sherlock Holmes. 
uh, and it fascinated me. And obviously they were coming to me not to put on two stone and fall around and put my foot in waste paper baskets, but they were going to come and ask me to play him with a bit more edge. Well, we were trying to get him to do the movie. And uh, you're a pretty savvy guy, so it's not like, you know, it's all just talk, 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 talk. It's, are you interested in, in, in making the best version of this? And the great feedback we've been getting today is that they say the movie is, is about the two of you and the third thing that that creates. But it's so funny to me, because usually I'm just saying, well, you and so-and-so, it's always female, had this great chemistry, and they're talking about Jude and I like, like we, we should be doing romantic comedies together or something. Whether it's through real-life experience or just good acting training, Jude Law certainly can play the womanizer, but he's also got plenty more strings to his bow and he's been acknowledged for it by the most prestigious acting academies the world over. Stay tuned to Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's all together better on screen and at mnc.tv.